everyone. Uh, all right, welcome back to Ethics. Um, and today we're talking about um, Hannah Arendt. Um, Hannah Arendt, a American German uh, 20th century philosopher. Her dates are 1906 to 1975. Uh, and Arendt is one of the most um, influential important political figures, pol sorry, political philosophers of the 20th century. Um, she wrote extensively on uh, political philosophy, in particular Kant and Aristotle. Um, and as we've seen, uh, she is, in thinking about Kant and Aristotelian politics, you're thinking about their ethics also. Um, she was one of the major thinkers of um, totalitarianism. Uh, one of her biggest and most renowned books is uh, called On Totalitarianism. If you're interested in thinking about uh, what totalitarianism, uh, what fascism is, um, I strongly recommend that book. It's about uh, the conditions that allowed for the rise of the Nazis in Germany. Uh, she, in addition to being a thinker of totalitarianism, was a political philosopher who was interested in revolution uh, and in the idea of freedom and uh, newness or um, birth within the political realm. Um, and she was a thinker of uh, modernity, um, what the modern condition is, what the modern world is uh, and means, uh, and especially about uh, what it means to be human uh, in modernity, in the modern world, and the ways that uh, modern society alienates us from uh, ourselves, from our own Humanity. She's a thinker of uh, mass society, uh, and I think that she is an interesting um, bridge between uh, the Nietzsche that we were just uh, discussing in the last videos and the Marx that we're going to be talking about in the uh, next videos. Um, Arendt, in this essay that we're looking at, uh, Tradition and the Modern Age, uh, is thinking about both Nietzsche and Marx uh, as figures who um, call the modern age into existence, are the foundational figures of uh, the 20th century, and who... Um, in some sense, call an end to the classical tradition, uh, to um, the quote-unquote Western tradition. Uh, so when we think about how the 20th century marks a break from uh, the rest of history, or what's unique about the 20th century, um, there's a lot of uh, philosophy that uh, understands the 20th century to be uh, a time for philosophy um, that is sort of beyond the uh, the rest of the history of philosophy uh, outside the outside of traditional philosophy uh, and so Arendt in this uh, essay is thinking about what that tradition means what um, it means when we talk about um, the Western tradition or the Western political tradition, uh, and thinking about um, what marks the end of that tradition, and then um, I think most interestingly, uh, where we go um, after the end of that uh, tradition of Western um, political philosophy. Uh, so. In this essay, we hear quite a bit about 
Nietzsche and Marx as figures who uh, herald the end of uh, this tradition. Um, but Arendt is not, uh, is neither a Nietzschean nor a Marxist, strict, uh, strictly speaking. Uh, she uh, has, in particular, critiques of Marx. And uh, given that in our next set of uh, lectures, our next topic is going to be Marx, I think it's interesting to um, to begin with a kind of um, interpretation of the 20th century and modernity uh, that is done through a Marxist lens. It uses Marxist ideas and categories in order to understand modernity in the 20th century, but which is also going to be um, critical uh, or questioning of some of uh, Marx's thought. Uh, so Arendt gets right down to it um, in, uh, on page one of uh, this essay, Tradition um, in the Modern Age. She writes, uh, Our tradition of political thought had its definite beginning in the teaching of Plato and Aristotle. Right? And so using the standard um, beginning of philosophy of uh, Western civilization, um, such as it is, uh, if such a thing exists, uh, right, she begins with Plato and Aristotle, uh, and she goes on, I believe it came to a no less definite end in the theories of Karl Marx. Right? So, uh, very often we hear metaphysics begins with uh, Plato and ends with Nietzsche, uh, when Nietzsche reverses uh, all of Plato's hierarchies, right? No longer is it uh, the mind that is the uh, most important part of our being, uh, it's our body. Uh, and in that reversal, uh, Nietzsche is said to have um, called an end to the uh, tradition of, of Platonic metaphysics. And this idea uh, of bringing things to an end by reversing them is something that Arendt is concerned with throughout this essay. Uh, she thinks that something similar happens with Marx. And just as Nietzsche calls an end to Platonic metaphysics, uh, Marx calls an end to Platonic and Aristotelian political theory uh, by, in some sense, reversing uh, that theory, by reversing the, the hierarchies of that theory. Specifically, uh, for <clears throat> Plato and Aristotle, uh, labor was uh, sort of the, the bottom rung of the hierarchy of action. And contemplation is the highest rung. Uh, again, the body is devalued and the mind is valued above all. Uh, and Arendt thinks that for Marx, this is reversed, where labor, uh, bodily labor, manual labor, becomes the centerpiece of human being and an essential part of being human, uh, and that we should not uh, think about politics uh, as having the goal of contemplation or as being uh, organized uh, through uh, contemplative reasoning or wisdom. Uh, we need to think about politics through the lens of labor. We need to think about and analyze politics uh, according to existing uh, labor conditions. So we begin with labor. Labor is uh, the object of political thought rather than labor being uh, the means to contemplation, which is the object of um, political uh, of politics. <clears throat>
Uh, so we'll say a little bit more about this reversal uh, a little bit later on. Um, but I want to um, begin also by uh, challenging this idea of tradition in general, and Arendt is, is critical throughout the essay of the idea of tradition itself and uh, the uses of tradition and when it is that we even begin to uh, think about a tradition, uh, right? We don't um, worry about a tradition until uh, that tradition ends or is uh, beginning to reach some kind of end, uh, right? So the traditions that we maintain strongly, we barely even think about. We don't think about them as traditions, right? We, uh, we just do them. Uh, it's only when tradition is threatened or winding down or collapsing that there is some sense of, um, of the fact that it was a tradition. And this makes some kind of sense, right? You can't think about uh, something um, as, uh, as a discrete entity, right? a discrete tradition. Uh, until you've seen it in its completeness to some extent, until uh, it comes to an end. So the very idea of talking about the uh, Western political tradition uh, implies inherently uh, some anxiety, at least, that it is coming to an end or that it has ended. Uh, so, right, when we hear... Uh, People, um, you know, talking about uh, uh, championing the uh, Western tradition. And I'm thinking of figures like Jordan Peterson or um, Ben Shapiro, uh, this sort of new breed of uh, conservative um, pseudo-intellectuals who um, uh, are defending uh, Western traditions and the values of Western tradition. Well. That whole discourse is only possible uh, because those values have um, been called into question, have been discredited because that tradition has, in some important sense, come to an end. People only become aware of uh, and feel the need to defend tradition uh, after the end. So uh, that point is pretty clear, and I, I think Arendt gives a couple of interesting examples. Um, she says, for example, uh, the first time that we have a, an historical record of um, anxiety about a tradition uh, is when the Romans began adopting uh, Greek mythology, Greek uh, philosophy, uh, and Greek political forms. Uh, Right? When one culture begins adopting the values of another culture, then uh, you see, uh, or Arendt says, in ancient Rome, we saw this concern about uh, the Greek tradition, right? Uh, and Romans started um, borrowing from the Greek tradition. So um, there's a, a completeness there, right? Rome is ascendant. Rome has uh, superseded Greece as the uh, most powerful place in the ancient world. And so the Greek tradition has, in a sense, come to an end, and it can now be appropriated uh, by the Romans. Uh, and so the Romans begin talking about the Greek tradition and uh, interpreting that tradition uh, and using that Greek tradition for their own ends. Um, I think 